Kobo aloha aina, aloha nui kako, and mahalo for joining us for another episode of Ahai Olaloola, highlighting some of Hawaii's unique cultural and historical sites. We'll travel the winding road to Hana Maui to the home of the fishing god Kuulakai. And our friends from Mauna Lua tell us about the largest fish pond in all of Polynesia right here on Oahu. We start our journey in Kohala on Hawaii Island where a brilliant scheme unfolded to protect the newborn baby and the future conqueror of the Hawaiian Islands, a story that can be rediscovered through the place names in this town. None of us knew this story. None of us knew the meaning of Avi, Kapa. Nobody. Uncle Fred was raised in Kohala, a town that is home to a population of a little over 6,000 people, situated about 50 miles north of the town of Kailua Kona, one of Hawaii Island's central hubs. While Kohala town itself may not leave a big mark on a map, Kohala does hold its own in Hawaii's history books when it comes to recounting the birth of a noted and celebrated Hawaiian. I think it makes Kohala very unique. The entire district giving place names to commemorate one of the most significant events as far as they are concerned, the birth of the greatest warrior Hawaii has ever known, a Kohala boy. History tells us that High Chief is Kikuiapuiva gave birth in an area of Kohala called Kokoiki to a baby named Paiea. When, when Kamehameha, his mother was Hapai, Kikuapu was Hapai, we all know the prophecy, yeah? She wanted to eat the eyeballs of a tiger shark. If you kill the shark, you're killing the Ali of the Kekai, right? Ah, this baby is going to be a slayer of chiefs. With that prophecy, it was clear that this infant would grow up to be the one to rule Hawaii. There was an urgent situation, however, that stood in the way of this prophecy coming to pass. Having heard the prophecy, the ruling chief, Walapai, had declared that this child be hunted down and killed. So Kekuiapuiva charged one of Kohala's chiefs, Naiole, with protecting the child and taking him to safety. And he devises a plan to take Kamehameha from where he's born at Kapaka and Kokoiki to Avini, the distance of about 15 miles. According to some, the story of Naiole's journey to get the baby to safety can be recounted via certain interpretations of the place names in Kohala. Uncle Fred shared some of his own research and interpretations with us, starting with an area known as Havi. There was about the third or fourth place that he stopped and something went wrong. The wet nurse wasn't there. He was starving. Ha, V, famine, hunger. Ha is the, is the breath of hunger. Naiole continued on to the area called Kapa'au, where the original statue of King Kamehameha stands today. All the gulches, all the ravines were flooded. Kamehameha was born in the Ikua season. So when they went through Kapa'au, they had to wrap Kamehameha in his kapa, make him tight and snug. And they, they went through this swollen stream, so his kappa went oh, kappa oh. Naiole's journey continued on to Makapala, and by this time they were three fourths of the way to their destination in Avini. The people in Kohala are getting confident. They say, you know, we're going to make it. You know, they're almost there. Alapai's warriors have been searching night and day, no sleep. Their eyes are swollen, bloodshot. And so now they're poking fun at them. Their eyes are ripe. Makapala pala. And many of us know how this story ends. Naiole's strategy played out as planned, and he arrived safely in Avini with this infant who grew up to conquer and unite the Hawaiian islands, Kamehameha the Great. It makes me very proud. The people of Kohala themselves were so proud of what they did that they commemorated that and made sure they wouldn't forget by giving these names. Uncle Fred has been researching these stories for over 50 years. 
This journey of rediscovery for this Kohala boy has become a very personal endeavor. When I began to realize what a rich historical legacy this district has, and, uh, and how, how close we came to losing it. And uh, I, hope, I hope it'll never be forgotten. For Kamehameha the Great, all roads lead back to Kohala. More when we come back. Excuse me, guys. You guys know how to get the spouting water from here? Oh, yeah. Uh, you want to go down Mudhen Water here? All the way till you get to Quarter Line Terminalis Underground Oven. Then go right on Worn Out Soil. All the way till you get to Day of War. And you're there. Okay, thanks. Without Hawaiian, it's just not the same. Ahapunana Leo, reinvigorating the Hawaiian language since 1983. Join us. Aloha mai e na mamo ahaloa mai ke kahi au au ai ke kahi au au aku ke ia pai aina. E ia mako na hoa o kaleo o iwi. E launa mai no i ke ia ha ule lau ma o iwi TV nei. Um, what did she just say? Stick around, you'll find out. Bye-bye. Kaleo o iwi, a new Hawaiian language learning series now on o iwi TV, digital channel 326 and online at o iwi TV. We travel down the road a bit in Kohala to another place closely associated with Kamehameha the Great, Pu'ukohola Heiau, which served as a critical turning point in his quest to conquer and unite the Hawaiian Islands. This majestic heiau was built between 1790 and 91 in Kauai High, South Kohala on Hawaii Island, under the direction of Kamehameha the Great, in lieu of a prophecy by the priest and seer Kapokahi. Kapokahi was the one who actually instructed Kamehameha uh, that in order to gain the islands of Hawaii under his control, that he, he would have to build a house uh, to his war god here at Pu'ukohola. While one translation of Pu'ukohola refers to the pu'u or house of the kohola or whale, there are several others known to those kama'aina with this area and its stories. Local ohana from the area here uh, talk of Pu'ukohola meaning uh, the day of when a contract was made um, and believing again that that was the day when Keoa came and, and made the contract with Kamehameha. They had been battling over Hawaii Island for years when Kamehameha extended an invitation to Keoa to join him at Pu'ukohola for the dedication of the temple and Keoa agreed. Many believe he did so with a full understanding of the signs and prophecies that this would lead to his demise. And so it was. Keoua was killed at Pu'ukohola, and in time, Kamehameha became ruler of Hawaii Island. With that, Kamehameha went and conquered the other islands, except for Kauai. But this way it all started. It's been over 200 years since Kamehameha's dedication of Pu'ukohola during an entirely different era in Hawaii. But a group of dedicated practitioners are committed to perpetuating its history. Okui Kahi is. Um the venue in which we continue to try and, and pursue Kamehameha's uh, unfinished good deeds of unification and trying to bring uh, the people of Hawaii together uh, to at least experience a small part of what our kupuna experienced here at the Heiau at a temple of state such as Pukohola. So. Some are slowly coming to see what's happening there, you know, and to where our culture is coming back. It's a learning place for us. We look at Pukola as also the peak of our nation, where it started. And it's, it's a point in time that we can walk with our ancestors, our Kukuna. Commercial development in the latter part of the 20th century, oceanfront resorts and hotels in particular, left many of our significant sites in disrepair without their native caretakers. More culturally conscious landowners, however, are now stepping up to help reverse these effects. Today as Hawaiians, we're going back to our ancestral past. We're finding many things 
that were lost and now are being told. Kamehameha Schools has major land holdings in the Keoho Kahalu'u area, and in 2007, they began the restoration of two ancient heiau on the grounds of their outrigger Keoho Beach Resort. This restoration project wasn't just about rebuilding the physical structure of the heiau, but about recovering and reviving its histories and stories as well. Ke'iku heiau is, you know, a major luwakini, and this is where Kamala Lavalu, the ruling chief of Maui, came and he was sacrificed upon Ke'iku heiau. There was also evidence that the neighboring heiau, Hapayali'i, was a reference point for the equinoxes and solstices. Knowing that, it would indicate the, the changing of the seasons as a, 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 a place to reference the, the, the changing of, 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 of activities and during that time period um, uh, in keeping with the many different couples associated with these wahikupuna. This project presents a wealth of opportunities for learning and enlightenment from the historical research to the physical labor. Clearly when we see the restoration or the putting back of, the, of our pohaku, we also see the building of our community. Another of Komehameha School's site restoration projects aimed at educating the community is centered around the birthplace of a famous ali'i in Keo Ho. And this is the place where uh, the ali'i uh, chiefess Keofu'olani had her pains at the time of the, uh, the birthing of uh, Kaukioli. Kaui Keauli, born in Keauho, was the third Kamehameha to take the throne and ruled over Hawaii in the early 19th century. If we look at the, the name Keauho, Keauho the, meaning the new time, or the new current, or new watch, that current uh, could also mean the new watch of Kaui Keoli, where he, he took our, our, our country from uh, a complete absolute, absolute sovereignty to a more of a constitutional form of government. Mahialani hopes that as people connect to this place, it will also help them connect to their past. If we can uh, help them with a vehicle to make them connect to their own cultural heritage, that's the key right there. And, that's, and, the, and then for us, it's success, leaps and bounds. It's a long 68-mile journey with over 600 turns and nearly 60 bridges. But once you get there, it's all worth it. We'll be right back. He kuuna kahula e ola ana manahana una ho. E ola no e a e ola. Ahana una ho aku. Naman. O ka puna na leo he honu o oulu o lalo a ike kuuna Hawaii. E komo like mai no. Ahena ni ke. All set? You bet. And to the right, bam. Alternating feet coming forward on the right. And now opening the knees and kicking the feet. And vamp right, vamp left, and we're done. Without Hawaiian, it's just not the same. Ahapunana Leo, reinvigorating the Hawaiian language since 1983. Hana may be off the beaten path in Maui, isolated from the conveniences of the city, making lifestyle there a little different. But for most of Hana's locals, they wouldn't have it any other way. The long and windy road to Hana is an adventure in and of itself. But as soon as you get your first glance at its lush beauty and meet some of its generous and hospitable people, there's no wonder why they're so fond of their home. Kanohana manei he palekana ke ano. Kaimana was born and raised here in Hana and has a true love for and understanding of his birthplace. Mahana kohumela he ana ho kahino na kanaka apo. The close knit bonds that define this community have allowed them to perpetuate their traditional knowledge with new generations. Okapo mai kai o kanoho o Hana ana make akauna. Um, 
Kaimana shared one of these stories he learned from his kupuna about the area called Lehoula, which was home to a fishing god. And this was no ordinary eel. It had special powers and Ku'ulakai charged his son Ai Ai with the task of killing the eel. With the help and support of the Hana people, Ai Ai caught and killed the Puhi, confirming his skill and agility. And so Ku'ulakai then bestowed upon Ai Ai the responsibility of keeping and perpetuating the fishing tradition. This story holds an important lesson for us about the value of our fish ponds. These traditional stories of Hawaii's special places are more than just great tales. They embody the wisdom of our kupuna. We head off to the plains of Wahiawa in central Oahu to a place that's home to some pieces of our history that hold ancestral knowledge and wisdom is shared by this historian committed to uncovering this heritage. As the pico uh, of Oahu, Kukani Loko uh, connects and centers us as a people. Tom Lenchenko has spent years studying and learning about Kukani Loko and its 180 stones scattered along these five acres. You're going to find out that once you begin, the history is so deep, we don't have enough time to understand. Tom has an interesting interpretation of this place name that speaks to just how significant the area is. Ku Kani Loko, Ku to anchor, Kani to cry out, Loko the Na'ao or the womb. So to anchor the cry from within. The reference is to a mother who finds inner strength during the pangs of giving birth. And according to traditional stories, Kukaniloko was in fact where Oahu chiefs such as Kakuhi Heva were born. The backrests were for the retainers. There were five of them. One would sit here, locking in. A second would sit here, locking his calf. And what we understand is the firemen's carry today would lock arms across the shoulder, and then with their free hand, cup below her knee, and then she would bear down upon their shoulders. Then you have a fifth that would receive the child. In addition to these sacred birthing stones, Tom believes that some of the others are navigational stones. These serrated edges were pretty clear to demonstrate at least 18 on each side, giving you a 360 degree viewing. And what it was is for navigation. So when you put one straight edge on these two pico, it gives you the north-south. That from each one of these, you can sail any place you want to go. So very significant pohaku, very significant. You wouldn't know it's here if nobody told you. It's just another stone. And it's for this reason that Tom is steadfast in sharing these stories, so that all will know that these are more than just a bunch of stones. So for Kukani Loko, it gives us that, that opportunity to connect with our ancestors. The more people we outreach, the more people that can connect. From Tahiti to Wa'anae and back, after 800 years, this heiau still points the way. We'll be right back. How's it? How's it? Can I get a plate of steamed quarter line fruticosa bundles? Chunks of bonito, extra algae, gelatinized coconut liquid, and some pounded calacacia esculenta. Order up. I need a lao lao plate with poke, haupia, and poi. Without Hawaiian, it's just not the same. Aho punana leo, reinvigorating the Hawaiian language since 1983.
Sharing these accounts of our special places goes well beyond recalling great stories. It's also about perpetuating the practices associated with these places, something that Wai'anae's community is pursuing around this ancient navigational heiau. Kuiliolua Heiau is situated here at Kane'ilio Point to the south of Poka'i Bay on Oahu's leeward coast. Towards the land side, you could get a navigator or a master navigator sitting down towards the back of the heiau, looking at the broad horizon, watching the stars rise in the east and set in the west. When come nighttime, when you can navigate with star stuff and, and just study, uh, that's a different kind of connection that you get, yeah. Kuiliolua's history dates back to the 12th century and the arrival of a chief from Tahiti. The chief's name who came up here is Lono Akaehu. Lono Akaehu sailed to Hawaii from Raiatea, bringing stones from Tapu Tapu Atea. As Lono Akaehu passed Kaneilio Point, he decided to erect a heiau there with these stones from Tapu Tapu Atea. So what Lono Akaehu kind of taught when he built them was that, you know, this is pointing back to to home, yeah, to Kaiki, to Tahiti. Lonaka Ehu's navigator on that trip was a person named Kuilio Loa. So the heiau is named after his navigator. But the name has a deeper meaning as well. The values that he uh, exhibits are memorialized in the interpretation of the name Kuilio Loa, the protective dog of Ku. The spirit, the kupua, who protects travelers, navigators, and voyagers. And the next generation of Wai'anae's own hopes to preserve and perpetuate this navigation tradition by providing a home for their very own canoe, Eala, right here at Kuiliolua. And it's showing the history to, to our, our kids now, um, that whole history of this place and how if you take care of them, which, which our generation before us did, she can give back. And that's why it's important that Eala comes home to provide that platform of learning um, for these values that get passed on from the time of Lono Akaehu to future times. And to close this episode dedicated to some of Hawaii's significant places, we take a look into the past of this Aino, Mauna Lua. And while a lot has changed over the years, this group is dedicated to preserving its history and its heritage. Kiahupuo Mauna Lua Fish Pond, also known as Kuapa, once covered over 523 acres. Before, it's hard to imagine how large the pond was. Um, almost the entire length of Hawaii Kai was actually part of the fish pond. 86-year-old Anakala Joe Young has fond recollections of the expansive Kuapa Pond as his family served as its caretakers for 30 to 40 years. When we grew up, we should catch fish. We used to catch sometimes close to a ton, not a, th a thousand pounds, and we take them downtown. But Monolua's lifestyle and landscape changed drastically when Henry Kaiser arrived there in the 60s with his comprehensive and expansive development plans. Hundreds of acres of the fish pond were dredged and filled in order to develop residential tracks, commercial centers, and a marina into the well-known town now called Hawaii Kai really had an effect not only here but you know all the way around the island so that was one of the big big changes is with the fish um, and the birds also the reef and as they got rid of all the wetlands and, and their habitat all that disappeared these drastic changes that have taken place over many years have not, however, deterred these ohana from their mission to preserve Mauna Lua's heritage and resources. We really had to step up, though, because there was a lot of development pressure and things like that. We don't want to lose everything, right? And one critical component to this process is getting back to the pond, caring for it and cultivating it because of the bond created to this life-sustaining resource. Once we start to eat from, the, from our, our resource, you develop a, a stronger connection than if it's just something that looks pretty. These sources of fresh water are special and they're, um, you know, we, we need that to survive. Enohoa, aloha i ko'olalo Hawaii. Mahalo nui for joining us. And don't forget, 
If you have any questions or comments, please send them to us at manao at hawaiianlanguage.tv. Ahui ho wakuno. Aloha.